he's got the very difficult task of saying something nice about conversion therapy at this point. And he's like, you know, a lot of people have the wrong idea. They think that we... Like, you know, they just hit people with a baseball bat and say, don't be gay. That's exactly what he says. And he's like, we don't do that. Done with nice thing to say. I guess, conversion I guess we're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Good point about your thing. Guys, it's a softball bat. <laughs> <laughs> they don't use a baseball bat. They use a softball bat. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because happiness is overrated. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Fuck your face, everybody in this movie. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, no, that's fair. And uh, Eli will be unable to join us today, but sitting approximately the same distance to my northeast is returning guest masochist Patrick Davis. He's one of the founders and producers of Scam New York, the first magic show to return to New York City following this most recent apocalypse. Patrick, welcome back. Yeah, this was a bad movie. I'm not sure that there's going to, there may not be a third appearance if they keep going this way. (laughs) We don't normally get return guests. I'll be honest with you. Do you not enjoy this motion picture? Is, uh, no motion. You know what? I'm gonna even say motion picture is, is, is being generous. This was more of a PowerPoint. Yeah, very little motion in this picture. So Heath, tell us, what will we be breaking down today? We watched censored on YouTube. It's a pro conversion therapy documentary. That I is. guess we'll call it that. I called it a motion picture earlier. I'm giving it a lot it's of not credit really. Yeah, uh-huh. both of those descriptors. But more importantly, it is. I'm pretty sure a prank by a genius gay man who snuck into the movie, pretending to be an example of successful conversion therapy, and then he spent about two hours making an escalating series of more and more overtly sexual comments about (laughs) very clearly the gay sex he's having all the time and loving. He's the best if that's what happened. John was fucking awesome. Yes, yes. uh, I I noticed that myself. And Patrick, how bad was this movie? You know, actually, it made quite a few good points. 17 good points to be exact. (laughs) And and from those 17 good points, it made about five solid recommendations. Yes, it did. And and from those five recommendations, it made about three good points of action. And from those three points, and I'm straight now. Oh, no shit. Hey, congratulations. It just happens that fast. Yeah, right, right. Sexuality is fluid. (laughs) This movie revels in its verbosity. We'll get there. But yeah, at the very ending, the guy's like, now I'd like to make a few points. 17 to be exact. Are you going to read them all? Yeah. He is going to oh, read wow. them all. Wow. They're going to be on the screen. He will read them. Do they all the have extra adjectives in them? Great. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I think it's the best worst use of the future tense when talking about events in the past. Okay. <laughs> what eventually are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. So I was going to go, I, I stole the obvious one here. I'm going to go with best worst, tiny little microphone. So It's my favorite. Here's what happened is clearly, okay, so a big chunk of this movie is taken from some convention, some ex-gay convention where they have these two speakers, this, you know, the dude who's playing the part of ex-gay and a woman who's playing the part of ex-gay. And they're giving their testimonies. And at some point, the microphone they were using broke. And this guy was talking too quietly for the lapel mic to pick him up. So eventually, the solution was to get him to hold this tiny little lapel mic up to his mouth like it was a regular sized microphone. And we just see the end result of that. And he's telling at times a very tragic story of like the lack of acceptance at his church, et cetera, et cetera. But he's doing it while talking into this tiny little chipmunk sized microphone. And it's fucking <laughs> Hilarious. He looks like a giant trying to hold his new best friend human without crushing him to death. <laughs> so good. So I was going to go with best worst accent. Oh, we. Oh. Um, OK, so the narrator just lost a lot of Quebecy listeners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who were like, we finally, did. a movie without an accent. <laughs> <laughs> finally, a man who just speaks normally the entire time. <laughs> oh, my God. It's it's so much worse than what you just heard. Yep. It's this ridiculous Quebecois accent but it's not so that's a real accent I've heard it before yeah he sounds kind of like that but he's doing it at it's it's like a 
a robot was programmed to have a Quebecois accent yep. and they were like, random syllable stresses. There you go. Well, that's how we do it now. Yep. It, it makes they just they had a bunch no of sense. accent marks that they dropped on the way in or something. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of how like no other people on the planet spoke the way the Kennedys did. And okay. it's it's like there's that like it's it's a version of a Boston accent, but unique to just this one person. Right. So this is like the Kennedy Quebecois. Yeah, kind it's of a like, thing. Okay. It's like, yeah, it's an actual accent, but nobody else. It's it's a weird di dialect of it that only one person uses. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we have an awful lot of French Canadian to translate on the other side of this break. So we're going to need a minute to prepare, but we'll be back in a flash with all the gratuitous adjectives of censored. The vaccines are flowing, the lockdowns are ending, and here we are, slowly emerging from our burrows, squinting at the harsh and unfamiliar sunlight as we timidly poke our heads out into the post-social distancing world. And if you're anything like me, you forgot a few things while you were holed up. Like, for instance, how to dress yourself for public. But don't worry, that's where Cuts Clothing comes in. They've taken a classic men's fashion staple, the plain tee, and refined it, combining premium quality with a minimalist aesthetic. They sent us a couple, and seriously, these are now my first out of the laundry tees. But with the perfect tee accomplished, what next? Well, Cuts set out to create fabric uniquely engineered for each clothing style. Consider the new Cuts hoodie, where they developed Hyperlube French Terry fabric, a textile that's temperature-controlled and ageless. Really? Well, those seem like... Uh, unexpected descriptors for fabric. I wasn't. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, don't they though? Yeah, like like it has a thermostat and like a fountain of youth. It sounds exciting. It's not, yeah, no idea. But they're super comfortable. They look great, and you'll never want to take them off. Or how about the wrinkle free Pika Polo, a design that keeps you fitted for the office, the golf course, at home, the gym, or on your next date. Each piece of clothing is designed with custom engineered fabric, expertly graded for the perfect fit, arming you for every challenge and opportunity. Yeah, well, I mean, at least the challenges that call for custom engineered fabrics. That's exactly good stuff. Exactly. I have a lot of challenges like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, no, it, it feels like it's maybe just a lifestyle. Is it it's, just a it's lifestyle? not just a lifestyle. Okay. I mean, is it just clothing then? Like it's just not that? just clothing. It's oh. office leisure apparel for the sport of business. Okay. I would not have guessed that it would be for the sport of business. The sport of business, indeed. And right now, you can get 15% off your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash gam. Go to cutsclothing.com slash gam for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first right thirst room meeting for Censored, the expose in which we shall position this forcefully with study for our position, no matter what the main street medium says. Uh, huzzah? Huzzah, I, 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 think. I think. Now, the most important thing is that we express our ideas in the most clarified way we can. Yeah, exactly which is why I presuppose that I will be best suited for to being the narration for within the movie. Wait, what? Sorry, you want to be the narrator? I feel yes, that yes, about one minute out of every five should be camera in right on my bulbous head while I express to the what? audience that their sinkful ways are foreboding this cursor to tennis spacious. Uh, um, what? Sorry, uh, Michelle. We have other people involved that could do the job. What makes you think you're the best spokesperson? Well, I am bilingual. Are you, though? And and this means I am the one with speaking the most languages, so I am twice as much communication as that. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, but English isn't exactly your first language. Ha! <laughs> you noticed. Most Mostly people cannot. Really? They can't? I bet you think cashiers are flirting with you a lot. They, they are, can't stop flirting with me. Yes. This guy mm -hmm. knows. Yeah. I, I just think maybe a native English speaker would be able to express our arguments a lot more clearly, honestly. Mm. Well, I am not poor Tony, but I will digress if you insist. Great. Great. Okay. So what are the best arguments we have in favor of conversion therapy? Right. Well, um, some studies show that it only harms some Participants. Mm. Uh, we don't use shocking with electricity for decades now. Oh, and the guy who retracted the most influential study on our side of the argument was pretty old when he apologized for it. So he was old when he apologized. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Is that, are we done? Is that the best we have? Yeah, by, by about a mile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, Michelle, you go ahead and narrate. That's great. Huzzah, Fortis! And we're back for the breakdown. And as we've already implied, there's not a lot of movement in this picture. We're actually going to spend a lot of time reading the movie instead of watching it. And just to make that extra annoying, whenever text appears, it will do so to this shrill metallic sound that I described in my notes as razor spiders <laughs> scurrying across a chalkboard. Constantly like tick 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 it's, it's like, you remember at the end of Doogie Howser at the end of the show, he'd like t- type in the moral of the story into his little journal computer thing. No. It's like that if he was writing about the hate crime he just did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a, a like you can tell they're going for some like spy thriller bullshit mm-hmm. that like yeah. this yeah. is a secret file that we're accessing on a computer because even <laughs> right. though yeah. even though this message is censored we're still watching it somehow. Yeah, right. No, it's the whole premise of this documentary that we watched on YouTube is that they'd never let you play this documentary on YouTube. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. They actually say nobody talks about this because it's not politically correct. I don't think it's the um, ribald nature of the hate crime that's the problem for us. It's the no. hate crime itself. Right. More. <laughs> he says, or the, the typing says, the topic of this documentary will never be discussed on popular TV shows. I'm like, no, no, they'll bring it up. <laughs> they'll just yeah. talk about how it's a hate crime. Well, so. oh, but also like the topics of lots of movies will never be brought up on popular talk shows. Like, I don't think any popular talk show has ever seriously discussed the topic of geostorms, an equally real <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> Like researchers for major public affairs programs will also avoid talking about geostorms. Why yeah, right. is that? What are they trying to hide yeah. about geostorms? <laughs> like just because you made a movie about it doesn't mean everyone has to talk about it. So we open up the movie proper after the disclaimer on the question of whether gayness comes with an expiration date. <sighs> And this is where we get the Quebecois narrator guy. Ooh. And I was like, yeah, okay, the clicky typing. Maybe just stick with that. that <laughs> a lot. The narrator from the discotheque. For the rest of the movie, I was just, I couldn't even understand at times. Like, yeah. it would take me a couple of sentences at least to like zero in on the crazy accent when it came back to like find it. And it's like weird cadence. Yeah. Ridiculous. Before we see his face, though, we're treated to this like, and and it keeps reoccurring throughout the movie several times. It's like a weird slideshow. Like like when I when I made the joke earlier about like that this isn't really a movie. It's more of a PowerPoint presentation. It's because like so much of it is like where they've gone on like eye stock photo and mm. they've pulled pictures of just like boardrooms and people shaking hands and two people standing next to each other and and these just like obvious stock photos and are doing like use iMovie. To like make them like glide across the screen. Yeah. You can tell they didn't let any gay people work on this <laughs> because <laughs> everything about it is just amateurish and, and <laughs> like, like clearly this was edited together using iMovie and GarageBand. Well, it was so amazing about those stock footages is that they'll so rarely have anything to do with anything anyone's saying. Right. right, you'll just have like time lapse photography of a busy intersection, and you just be like, "We're not talking about traffic or time passing or anything like that." It gets a feeling they have a subscription to like iStock Photo, and it only comes with certain pictures. And so, rather right. than like buying the rights to the pictures that are relevant, they have to like kind of go through their file and be like, "All right, well, this one sort of fits." <laughs> yeah, right, like an Ed Wood assembly yeah. of yeah. some sort. Okay, I gotcha. Although I will say he. In his pronunciation, he keeps talking about the gay lobby, but he pronounces it as gay lobby. And I love that so goddamn much. I must have gay lobby in my notes 400 times. Oh, yeah, it's definitely I've had to teach my my computer that it's not a misspelling, that the galaby is what I'm actually going to start calling it now because uh, I'm uh, I'm reclaiming it. <laughs> there you go. All right. So then we meet our two main speakers from that you know, recovered gay convention that we were talking about. This is with John Murray, not his real name, and Christine something or another. And they're coming to us live from a fucking Ramada somewhere or something and telling us the story of how they cured their gayness. And of course, this starts with just the tragic story of being gay in a society that didn't accept you with religious parents in in both instances. Yeah, right. I think Christine says, I remember being horribly depressed because religion tells me my true self is evil. So I've now stopped being my true self. Nailed it. Like, that's the message. Right. The problem must have been my true self. Yes. Fuck. 
why is John using a false name? Like his face, like he's putting his face out there. Like is right? he, if he's hoping that, I mean, like granted for an audience of dozens of people, like, yeah, true, like yeah. nobody is watching this movie. Like half, the, half the views are us, but like, like usually <laughs> like when someone's like, we, I mean, I, I'm speaking about something that would, that would ruin my life if, if it became public that I, I held this opinion. Like usually they're like, is situated in shadow and their voice is modulated right. and it's like you know but he's just like no no you can you can film me at this place in a room full of people talking just say my name is john right well so now to be fair we've watched an awful lot of these christian documentaries in the past sometimes they have a lot of trouble with voice modulation <laughs> so we've Should seen do. that go terribly, terribly oh do they not wrong. have that technology yet <laughs> not this, often this sometimes. use of blur was a big success compared to a lot of the stuff we've done yeah yeah <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we meet John. We also meet Christine, who also has like, you know, look, I I don't want to make fun of these people. These people are victims, obviously. No, of- uh, of course not. And like his story is like very like his story reminds me of this guy I fucked in college. Like it's this very common thing of like, it, it, I mean, it's very sad what these people went through. Yeah, well, yeah, and and Christine's story uh, includes sexual abuse as a child, and we spend an awful lot of time on. John not being good at sports. Not sure why that was super relevant. Um, it it could be because he was masturbating five or six times a day. That's gonna like that's gonna hurt your mobility. I just feel like a little bit sports wise. I don't know. I that see that would see he's already doing interval training at such a young age. I figured that would make him great at so, you know some stuff anyway. There is something that is like like their stories are very tragic. Yes, and what was done to them was a crime. But it almost felt like a fetish the way he would just get up and reveal the most humiliating things about his adolescence. It really because they had nothing to do with anything at a certain point. Yes, this is the prank guy. I th- I I have a funny feeling. This is he's this is the guy I was talking about. I think he was pranking. Like he was like he was like it was wrestling. It was weighing day, and they made us all line up in our underwear. And then <laughs> I, yeah. the the coach made me stand on the scale, and I was two ounces over. So he said, "Take your underwear off." So then I had to stand naked in front of all my friends, and then I was still an ounce over. So he said, "Go take a dump." So I went and just took a <laughs> shit, and then I came back, and I was still point zero two ounces <laughs> overweight. And I'm just Shitty like, dude, you don't have this. Point. This doesn't have anything to do with what you're talking. Now, why are you still telling us this? Right. But I digress anyway. The specials today. Yeah. And he kept like <laughs> winking at the camera after he would do these stories. I'm I'm pretty sure he was fucking with the people who made this. So movie. there I am, naked and shitting in front of everyone I respect. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm still too fat to wrestle. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, but so, and of course, the implication of this dumb fucking movie is that he wasn't good enough for the wrestling team, so he fucked dudes, right? Like, the the, the implication is that this is all the stuff that turned him gay in the first place. Which is wild, because, like, if what you're saying is that because I guess you were bad at sweatily grappling men... It made you just want to sweatily grapple men harder. Right? Yeah. Like I don't know. Like it's like there's like a there's like a misstep of like you would think it'd be like oh maybe I'm not supposed to be sweatily grappling men. Maybe I should go find another hobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So okay, and this is also where we're going to meet psychologist and researcher Joseph Nicolosi, who I believe has done us the favor of dying before now. By the time this movie came out, I don't know, but but this is a shitty terrible fucking guy who's going to be talking to us from a completely overlit bathed and drowned in sunlight courtyard in patio oh yeah he's and almost certainly in florida yes uh uh-huh and he's really gonna lean into this whole like gayness is caused by bad parenting trope Right, because but the first thing they have to establish, you know, to make the argument they're trying to make is that nobody's born gay. You're abused into it or you're humiliated into it or you're shitty dadded into it or something like that. And in, in Nicolosi's own words, boys don't, quote, internalize their masculinity. Yeah, but the language he uses, he says that. Because you uh, you don't have a strong you know male figure or or whatever that you become the good little boy and that's like his term that the good little mm-hmm. boy is who becomes gay and these are shy timid terrified of breaking the rules and you just think about like look I know a lot of gays 
And the one thing that this community is not especially known for is being shy, <laughs> timid, <laughs> terrified of violating rules of so- right, or social yeah, exactly. norms. Yeah. Like these are not like, <laughs> sure, some of them are, but. Yeah. And, well, and the other thing they're known for is internalizing masculinity, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, yeah terrible right. phrasing one way or the other. Just like I don't think anyone's ever seen like a bunch of gays out on the town and said, oh, what a bunch of shy and timid people who are afraid of <laughs> making a scene. <laughs> right. So we we go back to John. He tells us some more humiliating stories about his wrestling tryouts. And then we meet Laura Haynes, who is introduced to this movie as a, quote, psychologue. What? Yeah, that's just French for psychologist. The, the movie is in English. Just use the English. I don't understand why they would have one thing in French there. See, I, I felt like like she was avoiding a legally protected term there. <laughs> I'm I'm a psychologue. Oh, are you? Yeah, I'm just nice. Anyone can be. <laughs> Me one. too. Yeah, actually, now that you said, now you mention it, I also I'm going to add that to my card. <laughs> so she comes in. Laura Haynes comes in to explain that most of her clients are bullied by society into hating themselves, and she's so fucking callous that she can describe that without realizing that that's what she's describing. Right. She's talking about like, oh, yeah, you know, the, the clients come in and they're so desperate not to be themselves and all. And nobody will help them not be themselves anymore. Those poor, poor people. Because, again, that's going to be one of the main themes of this argument is that, you know, we're not going out there trying to change who gay people are. We're waiting for gay people to come to us and ask us to change them. We're just trying to make that service available if they want it. Yeah, there's a very sort of insidious shell game that this movie does. Because on its face, that what this movie is proclaiming to do is something actually quite innocent. That there are adults who are unhappy with their lives, and it's because of this one reason, and they want to come to us for help. This is just a, a service we want to provide to certain unhappy people, and the entire world is plotting against us to stop us. Mm-hmm. And it's this this thing that we're like, on its face of it, you're, you're kind of like, well, yeah, I mean, we – We let adults make all sorts of decisions that I might personally disagree with. Like you can eat McDonald's every day for your entire life if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it. And I think it's probably unhealthy and dangerous. But like if that's how you want to live your life, you know, we let adults smoke cigarettes if they want to. It's Mm -hmm. probably unhealthy for you. But if you want to do it, go do it. But I, I think where it starts to come apart is when you start to say, if that's all it is, then why is the gay lobby trying to shut you down? Right. Well, and, and they, they talk about this too. They want, they want to shut us down because they want to, they think it stands in the way of their goal of causing homosexuals to be accepted. Well, okay, well, why would it stand in the way of causing homosexuals to be accepted? Well, because if you can change, then we don't need to accept homosexuals. Also, so what you're saying is that it shouldn't, it's not just a voluntary thing that you're trying to do for, for people who want to change, because if your point of view was, We want to help only people who want help. And if you don't want help, that's fine. Go live and be a happy gay. But if you don't want it, we're here for you. I think that's a a message that people would probably find weird. But like we let Mormons do that. Like if you want to go be a Mormon, go be a Mormon. It's, you know, not great for you. But sure, plenty of people are happy being Mormons. But if the argument was, well, if we allow people to become Mormons, then we can persecute and not accept anyone who's not a Mormon because you have the choice now to become a Mormon. Suddenly, that's a lot more insidious, and that's and that's the sort of unspoken thread that runs through this whole movie is, yeah, but what you're advocating is not that people just live their lives however they want. Otherwise, all of this wouldn't be necessary. Also, one of the difference is they want to be called doctors here, and we have rules about that. Like, McDonald's can't call itself a doctor and ser- serve you Big Macs as a doctor. You can get Big Macs, but you can't be right. tricked into believing you're going to a doctor and being handed a Big Mac as medicine. You know, a doctor can't prescribe you cigarettes as medicine, but you can go get cigarettes if you want. We know that's bad for you. Right. Well, and and nobody's stopping fucking Michelle. What's his name from going up to people and go oogity boogity boogity. Stop being gay. Right. What we're lobbying for, what the laws are about is not letting people do this under the guise of, of therapy, not letting people charge to do this. Correct. Yeah. And that's a sort of game that this this movie keeps playing and, and and we'll see as we as we go through this and i you know like i said it's kind of this thing that this undergirds the entire the entire movie mm-hmm. is is this game that they play where, where the goalposts are constantly shifting because at some points in the movie when they're trying to make one point they're going to say things like look we're only trying to help people who, who who want help and and sometimes when they're talking about research they say look we have found that in some cases some people are capable of changing 
their sex, you know, that's what these research found. And so if, if it's capable for some people, it might be for you. But then other times they make the argument, well, look, if, if this person changed, then it must be that everyone can change. And all yep. of a sudden it's like, well, that's not the claim you were making yep. 20 minutes earlier in the movie. It goes, it goes on and on. And we're going to be talking about this throughout this whole thing, but it's just, it's just, it's, it's where it begins right here is, is what this lady is where we're beginning to play the shell game of because we're hiding what our motive is. Mm-hmm. The particulars of it don't actually matter. And, and we can, and we can be flexible with those to whatever argument we're currently making in this exact instant. And we can change it later if we're trying to make a different argument because what we're trying to do is not actually what we're saying we're trying to do. Yeah, and I and I think it's important mm-hmm. that we spell that out right away in this movie so that because otherwise like a lot of the stuff that we're going to be pointing out won't make any sense. So yeah, just keep that in mind that that's undergirding the entire fucking thing. But John explains to us also and he's going to get back to this over and over again and again. I think this is how he got into Heath's introduction, but he starts talking about how he really wanted to be touched by other boys and then he puts this really long pause on it. He's like, "But not in a sexual way." <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to fuck dudes, but not in a sexual way. <laughs> yeah, we get his quote here that he says, I was misled by the idea that being sexually attracted to men made me gay. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> I like, hey, I too have been misled by the idea that being sexually attracted to men made me gay. And then I learned that words just mean whatever we want them to. And that is how I became a psychologue. Yeah. (laughs) Now, when I typed out psychologue, the spell check recommended I change it to psychiatrist. And frankly, I feel like I'm being censored. Yes. (laughs) Oh, you are. That's big tech trying to shut me down and I will not be silenced. (laughs) So then uh, fucking Michelle, the Quebecois shows back up to sort of sum up what we've learned so far, which is that. These people aren't born gay. They were beaten into it and forced into it by unscrupulous people. And I'm like, my God, are you going to accuse me of being the bald one in the powder blue shirt with a funny accent next? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, there, there's so much projection here. And like, look, I was not the smallest guy on the wrestling team. I didn't have an abusive father. My father was very lovely. I grew up in a Catholic home, going to a church every Sunday. I went to Catholic school until college. And yet somehow... I still liked men like if homosexuality was this like emerged like if it emerged from like traumatic circumstances of childhood, Mm -hmm. then you wouldn't have me an incredibly well adjusted and universally beloved homosexual. (laughs) (laughs) Well, but that's just the thing. Yeah, exactly. There are so many people that disprove their fucking point, but they're nowhere to be found in these documentaries. Instead, we get this goddamn they're going to spend like the next five minutes of this movie introducing all the experts that are on their side. Starting with Dr. Joe, Joseph Nicolosi, we've already met him. He is one of the three co-founders of NARTH, the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality. That's a pleasant sounding acronym there, right? NARTH. Oh, don't worry. They're going to spice that up and make it all futuristic soon. Yeah. It's just uh, the name of it now. I'm like 90% sure. That it's what Pinky yells in Pinky in the Brain. Yeah, I, I think you're right. He's like, North? <laughs> it's so weird that all of their experts teach at religious schools. That's just such a wild coincidence that everybody would be a religious nutter that they came up with. That's so weird. They all look like the main villain in a Spike Lee movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, this is like the fucking Suicide Squad of Spike Lee movies is oh, what we're being introduced. Do the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what this movie should be called. <laughs> Have you all ever heard of the show? It's on Netflix. Forged in Fire. It's a knife making show. No. Uh-uh. So it's like a knife making competition show. It's, it's it's very dumb, but I watched every episode of it because each episode <laughs> is four different <laughs> contestants and each one is their own unique type of sword guy. And like, when you think of sword guy, we all have the same image from like the guy who bought swords at the mall growing up. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know there were so many unique varieties of them. Like, <laughs> like some of them are like very religious sword guys and some of them wear kilts and exactly one of them is a woman. And like, it's, <laughs> it's just like, it's like, it's like, it's like, Oh, I didn't know that the subculture had so many like, you need, it's like Baskin Robbins of sword guys. And okay, that, yeah. that's what this list was like <laughs> for like watching these people pop up on screen. I'm like, oh, yes. If I saw any one of these people, I'd be like, yes, they are the stereotypical anti-gay bigot. But then when you see them, you see like the rainbow coalition of like, I mean, they're all white. Yeah. But like well, the rainbow right, yeah. coalition of flavors <laughs> of like all the different ways you can be this very one specific thing. <laughs> yeah. 
like the Dick Tracy bad guy lineup of hate crimes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like cartoon villain. It's like, oh, but there's so yeah. many types of cartoon villains. It's a, it's a whole <laughs> world out there to explore. There's rumply face guy. There's yeah. triangle guy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. So then we check back in on John and we also, we learned that he also got picked on in high school. Like this whole fucking movie is a bad date at this point. Yeah. I feel bad for him. I mean, you know, like unlike the rest of humanity, he spent his adolescence feeling awkward and insecure and thinking a lot about sex. Like, like, can right. you, Im- was, like, can you imagine if rough. when you were 12 or 13 or 14 <laughs> and you just felt inadequate or like you didn't belong? That must have been really rough. It must have been really hard on him. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. That's easy for you to say. You have a normal sized microphone to talk into. OK, well, that's true. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, one more mic thing here. Christine comes back on and she has a microphone, like a standard mm-hmm. stage singing into microphone. Right, now. the one that broke before John went on, yeah. I think John broke his and she was like, this is my personal microphone. I will plug it in when I'm ready. You're going to break it. <laughs> so she still has hers, but they didn't give her enough wire to get no, yes, you're far right. enough away right. from her podium like she wanted to. She likes to do space work. She's like a performer <laughs> and she's trying to like go out and do stuff and she keeps forgetting how short the wire is yes. and getting tugged back for a second. It's the best. She's like the dog that's run around the tree too many times and now doesn't realize there's a way out. Right, right. (laughs) (laughs) And again, like John starts talking about when he came out to his parents, his his dad said, just said no. His mom said he was disgusting. And, And just as you're thinking to yourself, wow, those are some demonic fucking parents. Michelle comes back in and he's like, with the help of those awesome, supportive parents, John managed to de gay himself. I'm going to stop you right there, Noah. That's not what he says, because this is where he begins speaking in the future tense about things that happened long <laughs> oh, ago. You're, you're what right. he says is, <laughs> Michael will tell his parents that he is gay and his parents will say that he is disgusting and then they will throw him out. And I'm like, wait, are you predicting what's going to happen? Like, he's an old <laughs> man now. Like, like, why are you talking like this? These things happened like 30 years ago. Seven of diamonds. What? What are you doing? <laughs> why are you talking this way? Well, okay, and then, and this is another one of these little bait and switch shell games that they play in this fucking movie, right? So he starts pointing out that sometimes people's sexuality changes over their lifetime. Now, that is true, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes uh, bisexual people feel less bisexual as they get older. People realize later on in life that they're more attracted to the same sex, whatever. That does happen. So they keep pointing out like examples of that as though that is proof that gay conversion therapy works. Right. He. This is where he actually like he brings up this argument of like that there is no gay gene and no one has advocated seriously for a gay gene in like 25 or 30 years. Like we know that's not how genes work. You're, you're not going to find a gay gene for the same reason. You're not going to find a smart gene or a funny gene. You know, it, really not since the discovery of the X gene in 1963, which gives mutants their incredible <laughs> and terrifying powers. Like no scientific work has been produced. The idea that a single gene controls something as complex as human sexuality. It's just, it's just, there's no evidence to back that up. Yes. Yeah. But also assume that is true. Just like this person did. I wanted somebody to be like, okay, well that means there's no such thing as a straight gene. And he starts panicking. <laughs> limbs, looking to prove he has a straight gene oh, somewhere. Fuck, fuck, fuck. fuck. It's called a boot cut. <laughs> 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 so they double down on this distraction so much that fucking Michelle might as well be like waving around the deck in his right hand while he's, you know, changing the fucking data with his left or something. Sorry, the boot cut straight. <laughs> that's, that's pretty fucking good. Bur- slow, bur- slow burn on me. It's pretty good. Also, we haven't mentioned the music to this point, And I just the music right now in the movie is almost certain that we are being chased through a jungle by same sex attraction. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> the the Gallaby is after us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we check back in with Christine, who explains that, you know, just as she was settling into a happy life as a lesbian and really understanding who she was, a bunch of evangelists came and started fucking with that. This is where she joined the Southern Baptist softball team. This was wild to me because they don't explain it at all. She just joins the Southern Baptist softball team. And, it, and, and to me, it felt like. That like softball is such an irresistible pull to lesbians that their natural predators lure them in by starting a league (laughs) and get them to join the team. Like she was just like, so I joined the Southern Baptist evangelical softball team. And I'm like, 
Why would you? Why would? Why, you, why, why would you do that? Like, <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> no, it makes no sense. I'm sure there were other softball teams they have to play against. Someone. Were they playing against like the Episcopalians and the Methodists? <laughs> like it was weird when they introduced it. I'm like, you're a lesbian. You can't find a, any other softball team, right? Like that's the only one. <laughs> And then we, we check back in with John and he's and he's telling the tragic story of going to one therapist after another wh- who would tell him, no, man, I can't stop you from being gay, but I can help you accept who you are. And he's like, nope, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I'm going to go find somebody else. Right. It, it, like basically John's saying like, boy, I sure wish somebody had beat the gay out of me when I was still young. He actually says that. Right. Like because he's like, because, I, you know, I, I got so old before I got the treatment that it was, you know, really like calcified within me. That's like stage four cancer. If you don't ungay by the time you're 18, yeah. you're kind of fucked. Like that was the message here. It's fucked up. Right. The, the message very clearly was we should be allowed to do this shit to kids. Right. But they oh, yeah. don't say it. No. Like nowhere throughout this entire movie, the argument is made about adults. Yep. About people coming to us wanting to do this. And like at a certain point, like I'm pausing this movie and I'm thinking about like, I'm like, there's a part of me that's a little conflicted about this because like, you know, they're just talking about like adults going to them. Look, Mitt Romney's a Mormon and he seems happy. Like, <laughs> I'm sure, like he's he has a very lovely <laughs> life and his 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 family seems very happy. And like, sure, they, they have batshit crazy beliefs. But like, look, if it makes you happy, it makes you happy. And I'm like, I don't know if this guy like I think it's the money he got from the Sandinistas that makes him a little. happy. Yeah, it's I think so. That's uh, look, look again, whatever works. I don't I, I don't think you should get money from Sandinistas. <laughs> but if it makes you happy, then I guess you're welcome yeah. to go, you know, go, you know, but like so that's but then but like. It's because the thing that they're not saying is the thing they're not supposed to say, which is it's not adults coming to them. It's right. parents sending their fucking kids to them. Exactly. Exactly. And the adults that do. Co- and, and, and keeping in mind that, that, that John, the story he's telling after he like he tells this story for a while and then he's like, and then I went to college. And that's when you realize that, oh, my God, this was like he was looking for a therapist when he was 16 years old that would ungay him. Right. And and they again you you have to like kind of extrapolate that from his story. He doesn't mention that. Do we do we want to talk about Christine's really funny joke here? I would love to. I would love to. She's really funny. <laughs> no, she's she's good. You you know you're crushing it when you have to stop in the middle of your speech and say, "Quote, yes, that was some humor." End quote. Okay, she did have to do that, but it's because the entire room of people heard her say I was the runner up for the Miss Butch America pageant and the entire room of people was like, oh, second place in that. That sounds like a real tournament that you got second place in. Like, yeah, congratulations. She's like, wow, idiots. No, that was a joke. That I was mean, a joke. I that, make jokes sometimes. It's not even an obviously a joke. Like, there, that could be a thing that they do at some kind of weird, like, yeah. I, I, I think it is real. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to lick if okay. that was, maybe, was a real thing. Like, lick. I think that, I think she made up a thing that actually exists. Like, oh, yeah, right. And, and then when everybody was like, oh, well, I guess congratulations. She's like, no, Oh, it was a ch- humor with the funnies. We don't no. know what to do now. You've made it complicated. To <laughs> to I can't tell if I should clap or laugh. Anyways, the point is, I think she's really funny. Just, oh, yeah, she crushes it. Okay, I was 100% team Christine in this moment. So she's explaining her experience with the Southern Baptist softball team. And so she's playing this sport and... You know, with her, she's like, well, with sports, the goal is to win, right? Obviously. And I was like, yes, yeah, obviously, obviously. Correct, Christine. And she was like, in church sports, it's win or lose, glory to God. And I was like, wow, I found something new to hate churches even more. I didn't know that. <laughs> I hate this. I love Christine. I'm pro Christine. She's so funny. Right? <laughs> she is funny. Like, like, I, like in this so, section, she had some shtick. She actually had some yeah, jokes. She's, she's absolutely, absolutely, she, was, she was actually funny during this section. <laughs> I watch these and I just assume going in like, okay, bigot team, evil. I'm not going to shit on these people, but you're right. No, there are. <laughs> she, she in particular was pretty funny. Like she them. told this section the way like any of us would, like with all of the like, like she's got some stick. She's got she can tell. Yeah, she's no, no, she did. She did all right there. She she got her legs under her here. They needed to give her more mic wire. She could yeah, have been out there yeah, the right. She's like Get her a wireless Eli mic. To, yep. She's funny. She's a space exactly. person. Exactly. All right. So then Michelle comes back to English at us some more. He points out that, you know, all of John's previous therapists were a waste of time because they never made him less gay. In fact, they made him even gayer. If you think about it, his same sex attractions were coming more and more often at this point. Now, keep in mind that he was 16 at the time. You mean he was thinking more about sex at 16 than 50? Whoa, whoa, they must have been fucking something up. I know there's this like, and I'm sure you all come across this all the time where like, 
it's almost like a magic trick where they where they go to you know because like when you're that age you don't think anyone else masturbates you don't think anyone else thinks about sex like you feel like this mom and so when they come in they're like let me guess you think about sex oh my gosh how did you know right well because you just have that look (laughs) about you like a deviant Mm -hmm. and it's like oh my gosh they they know something secret about me it's like no you're fucking 14 years old of course that's what you're doing right no it's like the fucking horoscopes oh wow yeah i do have a lot of ideas that i can't put into practice yeah right right exactly we talked about masturbation a lot when i was 14 everybody was talking about it yeah <laughs> well sorry i being very clear that everybody sorry i was it. from a happy family well <laughs> he was he was much more well adjusted i was well adjusted we were i am not so, well adjusted so i guess this all track. yeah <laughs> So, okay, then Michelle introduces his, he is so goddamn proud of this analogy, the weight loss analogy, right? Where he's like, imagine if right when people started getting fat, everybody said, oh, well, you can't try to change people's weight. That's what it's like to not let us do gay conversion therapy. People just started getting gay. Oh, my God. And now we want to come up with gay diets and they just won't let us. Yeah. He actually says like foods became more available then and everybody got obese and i was like oh my god he's making this into an analogy so he's gonna say that the dicks became available and men got gay <laughs> and literally that's what yes! he says next yes it, it was difficult for me to focus too much on what he was saying here because they were doing the iMovie like stock photo thing <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they found this picture of this like oh very happy, smiling, very large man. Mm-hmm. And they just linger on it for, an, for a very so uncomfortable, long. just getting closer and closer <laughs> on his face. Like it's not like, like, you know, when like news reports will do the thing where it's like people are still fat. They'll like take shots from the public, but they'll cut off their heads. So it's just yeah. like bodies walking around. So you don't embarrass anybody. But they were zooming on this guy's eyes. Yeah. Like there's no way this man knows he's in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, like, he, like he signed up for a photo session for a stock photo session one day probably took several lovely poses and thought oh, i don't know what those will be used for but you know i got my check and like he has no idea that they're just making fun of him yeah saying like look at this fatty like <laughs> oh he's just as bad as being gay right yeah exactly uh. well so i want to point out what an accidentally perfect analogy this is right because you know comparing gay conversion therapy to diets because generally speaking their bullshit diet, you know, diets are anti-scientific nonsense that only temporarily mask one's obesity. And the right thing is to just kind of get used to the fact that you're going to be a big person. Yes, you can control your fucking weight. But as for like th- like that guy we were seeing in that fucking photo, there's no diet that's going to make that guy thin. Right. So what he's really asking is, wow, what would the world have been like if we had just nipped fad diets in the bud early? And he and he thinks the answer is like, wow, that would have really sucked. We wouldn't have yeah. had anywhere near as all these great fad diets. Yeah. He said like when obese people asked for help, doctors just made up these insane diets that were unhealthy. And I was like, all right, how long before he hears himself? Is he going to catch this? And he keeps going. What if the government could have banned the fraudulent anti-science dietitians? How great would have that been? I was like, all right. He's got, no, still hasn't heard it. Nope. He does does not ever hear it. He's like, that would be a bad. Throughout the whole rest of the scene. Thing. And they move on. He never hears it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, look, all of his arguments are flawed. And like, of course they are. But what's exciting to me, and I genuinely mean this, like, this is the best that they've got. They've got a guy on a waterfront shouting nonsense for a movie <laughs> whose budget is about four hundred dollars yep. and will be viewed by roughly the same number of people as my dog's Instagram. Like, <laughs> like that's to me. I, I don't know. I just I like. I remember back in like when I was in like high school and college, or like you know when you had George Bush. You know, like like you had Bill Clinton signing the Defense of Marriage Act and Don't Act, Don't Tell. Then George Bush like rode in all wave of re-election by like changing states' constitutions in like 25 states to ban gay marriage, even though it was already illegal. Like there was just all of, it was just all of this anti-gay stuff was just so prominent in the culture, and like it was everywhere and pervasive, and like like the whole. The whole joke at the end of Ace Ventura is how disgusting a, the thought and idea of a trans person is that it makes you just barf. Like that, that that's what mm-hmm. that, like that's where they were, and this is where they are now. This guy just like yeah, quickly trying to talk as fast as he can in front of a waterfront before they kick him off to close the park for the evening. Like <laughs> that, and I'm like, to go to his shift at Best Buy. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> and so that's my. I'm like, I'm like, I'm watching this. I'm like, yeah, he's not making any good arguments, but like, it's exciting to me that like that this is where we are these days. 
All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're not going to have a lot of up notes to end segments. So I think we're going to pause right there. But we'll be back soon with even more Censored. Hey, Noah. What you doing there? You doing some uh, orthodontia? You, you fixing your adult night brace, but but backwards? I'm, ad- I'm backwards. adjusting my wireless headphones. You're adjusting wireless headphones with pliers? With pliers. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess it does say wireless on the side, but there's that giant bar running behind your head. I feel like that does have a wire. No, it, it's right? it's a bar, not a wire. Obviously, yeah. those are different yeah, yeah. words. Totally. Right. No, okay. Okay. Different words. That's true. Um, why don't you just try Raycon though? What's Raycon? They're the perfect wireless earbuds, like true wireless earbuds for being on the move again this summer. Whether you're listening to Billy Joel Uptown Girl or you're listening to, I don't know, Billy Joel scenes from an Italian restaurant. Reject what? the premise. Okay. 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 Whatever you're listening to, a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds can make all the difference. You get crisp, powerful beats for the epic story of Brenda and Eddie, just as an example, for whomever that might be listening to that. And they're half the price of other premium audio brands. Raycons look great and feel even better. They come in a range of colors and with customizable gel tips included for a comfortable in-ear fit. Plus, they have a 24-hour battery life, and the Bluetooth pairing is so fast. I love it. All my other Bluetooth stuff, it always needs me to, like, find all the bikes in a picture before they pair up. But the Raycons, they sync up right away. I use them everywhere, like when I'm cooking or walking around town or doing my workouts. I can, oh, I'm, I can, I'm sorry, your workouts? It, one can take them everywhere, like, for example, workouts that one might have. Got it. Okay. okay. So how do I get some Raycons of my own? Well, right now, Raycon is offering 15% off all their products to our listeners. Just go to buyraycon.com slash gam, and you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. And it's such a good deal, you'll want to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash gam. Buyraycon.com slash gam. That sounds great. I I, I just got to loosen my old pair real quick. Um, Will Mm -hmm. you pass me that socket wrench? Socket wrench. Okay. It's like Bob Dylan forgot which way the harmonica Okay. Goes. All right. Crazy. I get it. I get it. An intricate system of trusses. Uh-huh. It's a lot. And action. So the Gala B will have been infiltrating the May Day. Ow! What? What was that? It, sorry. Uh, l- little help? What? L- little help with the hockey puck. T- toss it back. We're, we're playing a game. That does not look like a game of hockey. Well, it's not. We're we're making a movie on this public pier, just like you. You know, the the puck is just a prop. Can, can you toss it back? Ah, yes, fine. Thanks, and uh, uh, don't let us bother you. Just uh, go ahead with your movie. Okay. Okay. Cool. Great. And action. So the Gela B will be have infiltrating the media. Ow! What's the fuck, guys? Sorry, sorry. That was that was me again. A uh, l- little help one more time. Well, uh, are you going to hit me in the face with the puck of hockey again? What? No, 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 no. Of course not. Oh, okay, fine. Here is the... Pa- no, no, it feels like there is a pattern, uh, like a, a rules of three, and as soon as I am start talking again, you, you are going to hit me with again. No, that is definitely not what's happening right now. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Here we go one more time. And action. So the Gala P will have been infiltrating the major... Oh, it's a dick this time! <laughs> okay, yeah. Ah. You had to see that coming, yeah. Oh, I'm directing both movies. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with them desperately avoiding the term conversion therapy by introducing us to the term migration therapy. Totally different thing. It's <laughs> not. But now they, they have spelled migration therapy in rainbow colors because the gays love that. <laughs> <laughs> they do the rainbow thing as like a pop scare. It's like <laughs> wing, rainbow letters. Oh, God. And Michelle's talking to us like everything he says is like he's trying to reach a word count. Holy fuck is this guy verbose. But he gives us kind of the crash course on the history of gay conversion therapy. Yeah. Is, is this the guy who said that like the neuroscience of the 80s and 90s was like super amazing <laughs> for conversion therapy? And that's. The basis for our thing now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Basically, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and there's this the quick thing that he does here, because this is the first time where he, he – so he jumps back to talking about the gay gene here, and he, and he also says, you know, because what the gay lady does want you to know is that homosexuality is a choice. And, and it's – you can tell that this is, this is a, a giveaway here because up until now, like, when we've been hearing John talk. John was very clearly saying he did not choose to be gay, that yep. he desperately did not want to be gay. He tried everything to not be gay and failed. He sought out therapists to make him not gay, and they could – so if it's a – choice it seemed like john very explicitly made the choice to to not want to be gay but still found himself being gay same with christine yeah exactly exactly so you just you're getting more insight into the show game here of like the argument you made in the first part of the movie is no longer the argument you're making now no yeah right no the goalposts go to wherever the fuck the balls could be getting kicked yeah yeah they also say you know this is a nefarious plan by the gala b to make society more tolerant and accepting that's what they <laughs> And I was like, you didn't hear the end? No, they're, they're not going to hear. <laughs> Dr. Joe, end of any of their literally bad mouth tolerance and acceptance in this yep. stupid fucking thing. All right. So now we, we rejoin John's speech right when he finally found gay conversion therapy. He went to this conference for, you know, ex-gays or whatever. And apparently the conference was filled with protesters and people explaining to him the exact same thing that all the professionals had been explaining to him about how that's not how any of this shit works. So he talks about having seen this speaker that was, you know, explaining exactly his story, but he was booed and heckled off the stage by all of those anti-gay conversion therapy bigots. Yeah, the anti-bigotry bigots yep. were a big problem for him. Yeah, exactly. And he talks about, like, you know, the speaker was super sad, so he went up to him afterwards and he wanted to say something comforting, but he couldn't think anything, so he started crying and they started hugging, and I'm like, these two men are going to fuck at the end of this story, right? Like John's going to fuck this dude, right? Yeah. In, in the last movie you guys made me watch, there was this like this similar moment where like it was these two men and it was raining and one chased after each other and they just stare at each other. And, and you can like it's all set up for this like, OK, this is where they fuck. But it has the exact same conclusion where it's like, you don't have to be gay. And so we in that moment passionately were not gay with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. We platonically sucked each other off. And yeah, and then we rejoin Christine's story at a similar moment. Now, it's such a giveaway that they know these are similar moments, right? So John's moment was when he first found gay conversion therapy. Christine's moment was when she became a Christian. Weird how those two things were the same. In Why was she the on the producers- softball team? Why was she on the softball team? That was never explained. Why was she on their team? It was the only team within a hundred miles. And who did they play? Right? They had to. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. We get another story from John here about when he was in college. And he had roommates and like he learned about the sports ball thing and specifically. Okay. I thought you might bring up this line. Yes. Did I hear this correctly? He says, uh, so yeah, one of my roommates was teaching me about football. So we went down to the football field and we tackled a goalpost together. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? That would, you would become seriously injured. <laughs> and then that, that evolves. Uh, this story gets a little more interesting. He says, yep. yeah. So mm-hmm. then we went back to the dorm, you know, and, uh, that, that roommate helped me out of my very greasy shirt and tucked me into bed heterosexually. And, uh, it was great. It was great. He has, okay, first of all, why was his shirt greasy? Were they playing football in There's Greece? There's a lot of grease on the goalpost. <laughs> oh, right, right. The goalpost was well greased. They have to be so, so that those field goals can go through. Yeah, we're not exaggerating. Like, literally, a greasy shirt. Type that's it was what like he this said. very tender moment. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Like, okay. So, guys, he was dating his roommate. Yes, yes, thank you. Was that not clear? Obviously, like they were dating. Obviously, like tackled some goalposts is just that's a euphemism for butt stuff. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Cause it's not a euphemism for football stuff. Hand stuff? I don't know. It's something. <laughs> this again, this is this is John running a great prank. I yeah, think, I, I think you're right. Yeah, right, right. No, it was that it, it, that's literally the story he says. Those are the words he uses that you know he, he it wasn't that he wanted gayness he wanted contact with men like when his roommate would help him out of his greasy clothes and tuck him into bed (laughs) and now christine at this point of course also finds conversion therapy she goes to a group called straight ahead get it a little pun god she is so funny she is so (laughs) funny 
Oh, I love her. <laughs> and then we get some follow up from Dr. Joe. By the way, he uses the term, Dr. Joe uses the term reparative therapy. Right. A- anything but conversion, I guess. But he's not on board with migration yet. Yeah, as a psychologue, I could speak endlessly about the differences <laughs> between reparative, migration, persuade, but we just simply don't have the time. Right. <laughs> That's true. That's true. They're all in the same synonym section of this dictionary, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. And also, like, so he's got a th- he's got the very difficult task of saying something nice about conversion therapy at this point. And he's like, you know, a lot of people have the wrong idea. They think that we. Like, you know, they just hit people with a baseball bat and say, don't be gay. That's exactly what he says. And he's like, we don't do that. Done with nice thing to say. I about guess conversion I guess we're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Good point about your thing. Guys, it's a softball bat. <laughs> <laughs> they don't use a baseball bat. They use a softball bat. Yeah, exactly. Well, eventually they whittle you down to a wiffle ball bat and then you get to you get to go home and of course i believe this is where john introduces us to some kind of little mnemonic right because he's like you know the first thing i had to learn to do was acknowledge what what i was feeling and then like a acknowledge appears on the side i'm like ooh 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 this will be great i'm sure (laughs) yeah what was the acronym was aim yes so yeah he was like acknowledge identify move yeah right okay so it was aim and (laughs) it's like yeah, so I definitely still like men somewhat, but I had these these acronyms. It was pretty sweet. A for acknowledge, and uh, you know, then I'd do I for identify, and you know, I, I'd see like a super cute guy, and I'm not exaggerating. This is mm-hmm. him describing yep. how this would go. I'd see a super cute guy. I'd identify that I was just jealous, but not attracted to his very beautiful form, and then of course, because you know the. Still have to, I'd move to M. Yeah, you have to remember the M, which is move. I'd move into the message. What the? And I was like, come on, just pe- spay it. M could be message. Why move into the message? <laughs> just make M, whatever. Yeah, it basically all boiled down to like, whenever he became aroused, he had to go do push ups. Yes. Right. Which, like, I guess works. But he had to do this like humble brag to of like, if you're sitting there wondering how I became so buff, and I'm like, no, I'm not. We <laughs> you know what it was. We weren't wondering that. That that was actually him trying to do shtick, right? That was him trying to be funny because he's very much not buff. And I and I thought to him to myself that it's like leave the shtick to Christine, man. She's got you yeah, know, she's, she's so funny. He's she's not. not. <laughs> <laughs> so then Laura hates. Now here's yet another fucking show game that they pull here. They'll constantly talk about how you know modern day migration therapy is never is nothing like the terrible electroshock therapy crap that they did you know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. And then they'll constantly say, we have a hundred years of evidence that this works, right? Well, yeah, but some of that is the shocky, tortury shit you said you're not doing though, right? But they keep, they'll just move in between those two points just interchangeably as though they don't contradict each other at all. This is also where we meet a Dean Bird who agreed to be in this movie, but not to fill the whole screen up. Yeah, it's really interesting who gets to be full screen and who they put in a tiny box because he's not the only one they put in a tiny <laughs> yeah, box. Right. Yeah. There, there's lots of like some experts get relegated to a tiny box. And it's not like it's because they're using the rest. It's not a picture in picture where they're using the rest nope. of the screen to display information. It's really just like a tiny box set off to the side of the screen while the next person gets to be full screen. It's bizarre. And they don't switch, right? Like if you're in the tiny box, you're going to be in the tiny box for the rest of the film. Right. It's like they were, it's like, it's like, oh man, we filmed this guy with the tiny camera. We can't, if we, <laughs> if we, if we make him go full screen, it's going to be pixelated. It's going to be blurry. Exactly we got to keep him on the, t- yeah. It's like, what happened here? What is this choice? <laughs> All right. Yeah. We meet a Dean Burton. He's going to introduce us to the Spitzer study. Now, I didn't know anything about this going into the story, but here's the deal on the Spitzer study. Spitzer was a very well-respected psychologist. He's one of the people who was chiefly responsible for getting the DSM changed to where homosexuality wasn't listed as a mental disorder anymore, right? So he was seen as this very progressive psychologist, and he produced a study that showed that conversion therapy could work. Now, It was a very bad study. People pointed out flaws with the study right away. They pointed out things that he did wrong right away. And the study didn't take into account the possibility, the potentiality of harm that conversion therapy could do. 
it got kicked around for like seven or eight years. He was taken to task by every major psychological publication in the goddamn universe for the study. And then like nine years after the study, he apologized profusely for it, even though he had like Parkinson's and had to type out his fucking apology through terrible goddamn Parkinson's. He felt like, and it was like months before he died. It was like one of his last acts was to apologize for bringing this thing into the fucking world. That's the study they're talking about. They will not acknowledge until the very end and even then just sort of like as an afterthought that he disavowed this study. They'll present it as though this was his life's work. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Sorry, I, I took all the wind out of that. No humor left in the Spitzer study. I mean, I mean that's, the, that's the thing is like so much of this movie is just like old straight men caring way, way, way too much about a bunch of faggots like. I can't imagine devoting this much of your life to like focusing on men fucking each other, just like men wanting to fuck each other, men actually fucking each other. It's just like, doesn't this get tiring for you people? Uh, clearly not. <laughs> so. Anyway, all of these men are dressed like it's still 1997, which, you know, like I suppose for them it still is. Yeah, right. If that. If that, but yeah, so he tells the tragic story of Spitzer, who did his very, very good study, and then none of them would let him play any psychiatric games or whatever, and they abused him and abused him, and then eventually he recanted, but only under extreme pressure, you know, with three months left to live. God, fuck these people. Imagine having three months to live and being like, now I will cow to your pressure. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Like, oh, no, I haven't bowed this point. But now with only three more months to go, I have to crack. <laughs> yeah, not. Yeah, that's when you really have a hold over me. Yeah. Yeah. But so but they go on and on about the Spitzer study for a long time. And look, like if you don't tell the last part of the story, it's actually fairly compelling. This guy was very accomplished and he was very respected. And he said gay conversion therapy worked, you know, even even what he said is like it can't it has been shown to be somewhat effective in like one out of eight people or whatever. And, and even that, again, he he disavowed and, and, and was torn to pieces. It was a bad fucking study. But Michelle hops back in to talk about like, you know, how everyone would have accepted the Spitzer study if it wasn't for that damn cancel culture. Yeah, I, I love to admonish the ideological indoctrination programs from the comfort of my gay conversion camp. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah. So and and of course, this is all to set up that point. And God damn it to the bigots love to trot this one out where it's like, I thought gay people love tolerance, but they're sure not very tolerant of us. Right. This is where they're they're showing pictures from like the Stonewall riots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, yeah. Having people who have been granted a monopoly on violence by the state attack and jail gay people is exactly the same as a letter writing campaign. You know, if you think about it. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Strongly worded letters we had to deal with. Very strongly worded <laughs> letters. Oh, they called the letters. Us names. Just like these riots were showing you literally at the same time. That was disgusting, that moment. Yep. Yeah, and then they said they do eventually admit that Spitzer caved to all the pressure. He even says, I shit you not, he says... Just like Galileo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is every, everybody who's wrong uses this argument about stuff. It's all the time with Galileo. If it was just like Galileo, we would now have a bunch of new science after Spitzer that confirmed that conversion therapy works. That's how, that's how it would work if it was an analogy to Galileo being correct about something. Yep. And well, they're, they're going to pretend like we do here in a minute. And also, I want to point this out, too, because they, they keep pointing out. They're like, oh, you know, and Spitzer, by the way, when he apologized, there's, you know, he wasn't in the best of health. He was like 80 years old. The clear implication is that he like, was no longer in his right mind, like he, he had dementia or something. And they keep pointing out, oh, he was like in his 80s. It's like the study was nine years old. He was in his 70s when he did it. Right. So if him being old means what he said didn't have any fucking weight then why the fuck are you talking about his study in the first place? Yeah, they're bad people. Yeah, <laughs> they are. They are. So, yeah, they dismiss the dismissal of Spitzer's study, and then they introduce a different study. This is uh, from Stanton Jones, who we already met. He also refuses to occupy a whole screen. He's a little box okay. dad. <laughs> the beginning of this is the best. <laughs> He's like, people keep saying there's no valid scientific research to support conversion therapy, but that's wrong. It's just not good or rigorous yep. scientific yes. research to support conversion therapy. I was like, wow, that is a 
rough start to a new section. <laughs> it turns out it's a section about him and his fucking study. Yes. Yeah, the fucking razor spiders chalkboard their way into the long typed out results where we discover that, hey, they were able to partially ungay 15% of their 77 subjects. And, and I quote, this is their fucking phrasing. There was, quote, low evidence of harm. No more details, just that. There was also 23% of participants that developed a functional adaptation to heterosexuality. What the fuck did that mean? No, I, I actually like that because I like to think over my life, I've also developed several functional adaptations to heterosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> Several mechanisms that my body naturally does when encountering <laughs> heterosexuality to defend myself so that I can thrive and prosper. You got a different shaped beak now for yeah. the, it's like the finches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can blend into my surroundings to go yeah. unnoticed. <laughs> they Get don't even notice cut. them. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where'd you even go? Oh, it's oh it's okay. Okay. oh, you were standing right, right in front of some, so some straight he, gene. Straight, yeah, yeah. He, he found yeah. the straight gene. So, uh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, but Stanton explains that he's going to do his own study. And, and he also explains that, you know, he doesn't hate gay people. His interest is purely academic. It is a total coincidence that he teaches at a Christian college and writes books about psychology's war against faith has nothing to do with it. He actually uses the rare rhetorical flourish of, I don't hate gay people. None of my best friends are gay. <laughs> <laughs> like, which I'm like, oh, I've not actually seen that one. There's nothing in there. It's the opposite. Okay. Like, like I don't like, gays to me are purely theoretical. They're merely a thought exercise. It allows me to keep objectivity. <laughs> Yeah, and so this is where they really start to dig into that idea that the gay lobby is uh, trying to shut down c gay conversion therapy because if they didn't, it would be so successful that there'd be no more gay people and nobody would come to their parties, right? Right, but the very existence of the gay lobby proves that not everyone would want to do it because <laughs> right. if they're trying to shut it down, presumably it's because they do not want to, like, they do not want to participate in it. Yeah. And like, it's, that's, that's yeah, just frustrating. Just like, yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Who would be against this? Like the next step of the question undermines it. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So, and then we, we have to spend a minute shitting on the American Psychological Association because obviously they came out against everything that this movie's in favor. So they have to like pretend that that's just political persecution of some sort. And this is where they start talking about the APA task force. So the APA basically created a task force to say, hey, look into conversion therapy. Let's get some evidence of the kind of harm that it does so that we can like make recommendations about it. So they have to shit all over this task force in order to make their point. I mean, I kind of agree with them. The task force sounded rigged. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, they put <laughs> gay people on it. Fucking two of the seven people were themselves gay. Like I was like, oh, no, you got a point that... Sounds pretty rigged. <laughs> well, look, so here's the fucking thing. Like, what are the odds that the people who are like the, the the real experts in the psychology of conversion therapy are the people who are opposed to it? Right. Like, I, come on. Like, obviously, that would be the case. But, you know, right. it's, it, so they're basically they're saying like, wow, that's so weird. You know, your your whole panel of outreach to minority communities is entirely made of minorities. Right, right, right. A fucking course it is. But yeah, but, but but they say, well, the task force is just a bunch of gay activists, so we can ignore anything that they say. And they do. Yeah, and they do. Yeah, that's true. I guess they do manage to, to get away with it. And then this shockingly unself-aware documentary goes on a tirade about the dangers of confirmation bias. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and this guy explains confirmation bias with enormous hand gestures, like, like it was complicated. But just to review, the last study they mentioned on their side was funded by Exodus, a homophobic religious group. And now they're talking about confirmation bias. Right. Well, they're, they're a fucking group. NARF. NARF stands for. I can't get over NARF. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. I just, I can't North? say it angrily. <laughs> 
But it stands for therapy. The, the T and the H are like for therapy on homosexuals. So obviously, if like people are showing that that's not a viable thing, you're the one with the fucking confirmation bias here. Jesus Christ. Oh, but and and of course, they have to like sort of acknowledge that, you know, all of them teach at Christian colleges. All of them have the same religion and the same denomination of said religion, et cetera. But so here's how they here's how they get around that. One of them says, well, you know, it'd be very condescending and biased to dismiss us just because we're religious. <laughs> I agree with them. Yeah, no, it, that would totally be like, you know, the, the fact that they're wrong would be a great reason to dismiss them. And the fact that they're all of the same religion would be a great explanation for why they're all wrong in the same fucking direction. But, yeah, if we just dismissed them because of that, that'd be awful. I mean, I think that I think the fact that the NAACP doesn't allow Klan members in it shows a bias. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know what? We need some affirmative action in the NAACP. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, I'm saying sometimes a bias is necessary. Well, yeah. <laughs> Not all viewpoints are equal. Right. Like uh, Laura, whatever her name was, uh, the, the psychologue lady, she cuts in basically to say, and I'm only slightly paraphrasing what she's actually claiming here, is that, you know, all of these liberals and gay folks are all about diversity until it's diversity of ethics. Yeah. Yep. Nope. That's it. That's exactly it. It's a shame the police don't allow murderers onto the force. That's a <laughs> right. Well, lack of diversity. Uh, of ethics. Yeah, actually, actually, yeah, that's a we have that's a tricky one Yeah, because they do. Thunder. Them on. All right. So and then, OK, so you're probably having a little under, uh, trouble understanding their point. So it's probably a great time to dig into some Doobie Brothers lyrics to help them <laughs> emphasize it. <laughs> No, I'm not making that, that really up. <laughs> Michelle comes back on and he's like, so the Doobie Brothers, Michael McDonald and the Doobie Brothers were at the top of the charts in whatever the fuck year. And What a Fool Believes was the song. And his argument is based on the lyrics of What a Fool Believes by the Doobie Brothers. Yeah. Guys, guys, this is where they won me over. Actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, is where, this is where I really got on board with them. Yeah. <laughs> A great philosopher once said, whoa, 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 listen to the music. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. And then, okay, this is one of the weirdest fucking things he tries to do. He's talking about the claim that conversion therapy leads to suicide. And he says, like, hey, you know, all the studies that show that are just prospective studies. They haven't, like, done it to a bunch of kids and seen how many of them killed themselves. <laughs> Fuck. No, they haven't, dude. Are you suggesting that they should? So, yes, my thing leads to a bunch of suicide, but no, I don't want your number. No, I don't want to give you mine. Does this make sense? This is a lyric or something. <laughs> is this helpful? Again, I'm compelled. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So it's time to chalkboard scratch our way into another typed study detail thing. This is the Shidlow and Schroeder study now this is a good guy study that actually showed the harm of gay conversion therapy so they're going to spend the next few minutes shitting all over that well i'm actually gen genuinely interested in because like they're playing kind of a tightrope walking game here where and th this is another one of those things where i'm like I, I i don't know if i've actually heard this argument from these kind of people where they say oh no no we're doing migration therapy conversion therapy we agree is bad we agree that that a lot of the the stuff that they did back then was was really bad. What we're doing is different, and and, mm -hmm. and I, I would be interested to hear like what exactly are these quote no longer relevant practices that they think are bad? Like presumably their own work is built upon this earlier work. Like the these people have been doing this shit for twenty thirty years. Like it's all the same people. It's not like a new generation. Right. Like all these people are are very old. Mm -hmm. So it, like if the earlier work is flawed and dangerous, rather than just like sweatily hand waving it away as having happened a long, long time ago. Like I, I would like explain the differences about like why what you used to do was bad, but what you do now is good. And and that's what we never get in this movie. We we never get nope. what it is that they're doing now and how is that different from these these things that they're saying aren't done anymore. Like they're just saying, oh, all the conversion therapy you heard about it before is bad, but what we do is good. Right. But we're not going to tell you what the difference is. Right. Well, right. Because the point is, is that they've just slapped a new label on the, on the. Exactly. There is no the same thing. Yeah. And, and right. So they, they can't actually say that they can, but they can say that. Well, we don't, that was, that was Philip Morris that did that. We're Altira or something now, you know? Yeah. Right. 
Uh, it, it might sound confusing. So th- this this study that the APA uses to discredit the the conversion therapy or the migration therapy or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. it's called, you have to understand the rule of three thirds. Um, there's three of them, <laughs> mm-hmm. and that's that it, that would add up to a hundred percent. So, and I'm not making this up. He says uh, Michelle, I think, says this mm-hmm. in psychology. It's always one third success, one third partial success, one third. No improvement. That's how all psychology studies go. Is that first of no, all? Is that what even could that what possibly he, be true? I can, no. <laughs> okay. So obviously not. No. Not, <laughs> but also, literally contradicted by their studies from before. They gave us a bunch of numbers that weren't yeah, mm-hmm. in the rule. Not even three remotely thirds. close to that. Yeah. Also, as part of three thirds, there's also five percent more. Something else. Well, yeah, exactly. And that's the weirdest fucking thing about it, because the only reason he brings this up is to say that, hey, look, even when a therapy is successful or, or effective, there is a small percentage of people that feel that they were harmed by it. Right. Like it, basically, that's the point he's trying to make. No matter what type of therapy you're talking about, no matter how effective it is in most people, there are will be some people that will come back and say they were harmed by it. And that's where the 78 percent of people who were harmed in the Shidlow and Schroeder study came from. Yeah, it's the rule of uh, it's the rule of 21 20th. Seventy eight percent. Those are equivalents. Yes. Uh, I'm not good at math, so I just accepted all of this at face value. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that's very interesting. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But again, it's worth noting, it's worth underscoring that the best that they could actually even hope for here was to argue that the studies only showed that their therapy could be harmful, not that it is. And then Michelle sums up the summary that he just summed up. <laughs> By saying that if we reject their studies, then they we also have to reject the Shidlow and Schroeder study, right? So, like, so if we reject one is a scientific study that was published in a journal, and so was the other. So if you throw out one, you have to throw out all of them, and then nobody has any evidence. I guess we tie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, knowledge is a zero-sum game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. And then, okay, so this is where Nicholas Cummings chimes in. Now, he is, again, he was a guy who was a very accomplished psychologist, but decided he'd rather be a bigot and and gets his kicks on that these days. And he's pointing out like how there's a systematic bias against like gay conversion therapy that the American Psychological Association won't even publish articles about it anymore. I mean, for what it's worth, the APA also doesn't review my books or publish my articles. Yeah, I thought about the same. I actually wrote the same thing in my and notes. They don't, they, don't, they don't do anything that I think of me, to, to be fair. And I, and I want to take this moment to clear up something here in the documentary. He says at one point, he goes, it, it's like it's like the, the gay lobby has sort of captured the APA. And I just want to say, we didn't sort of capture the APA. We did capture the APA. <laughs> And they, they're going to continue to hang over a pit of snakes and alligators deep inside our volcano layer until all of our demands are met. <laughs> if, if, you, if you puny Americans ever want to see your precious APA again. <laughs> send 20 bitcoins to the following address. No cops. All right. Well, I think we all need to take a moment to shed a quick tear for Nicholas Cummings' unreviewed book. So we're going to take one last break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Can John make it to the end of this video without fucking a dude? Just how convincing do they think, but we don't even use electroshock therapy really is? Will they take this movie down if I tell them that it made me gay? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the decaheptapartite conclusion of Censored. It means 17 17th. That's the rule. Yeah, the rule of Hey, Heath. Hey, hey, uh, Noah, yeah. Uh, it feels like I sat in a puddle, but my pants are bone dry. So okay, um, good talk. I'll I'll see you later. Wait, 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 just okay. Will you feel this? Am I crazy? Just feel nope. this. Nope. I am not gonna feel your ass area on your pants for wetness. Come on, just quick pat, quick pat down. Stop I just backing to towards just me. Really quick, just really touch. You're, your, you're touch gonna really hurt quick. yourself. Ow! Ow! Okay, I felt. Your, so, I, yep. There it is. So yeah, it I'm gonna just call it from here at a distance. You might be suffering from swamp ass. And the cure? A Hello Tushy bidet. Wait, what's a Hello Tushy bidet? 
It's like a tiny shower for your undercarriage. You use water when you clean your body, right? Okay. Well, it's time to start doing that when you clean your butt. The Hello Tushy 3.0 cleans soggy butts like a champ, but it doesn't stop there. It also cleans itself with the Smart Spray automatic self-cleaning nozzle. You just attach it to your existing toilet with no electricity or extra plumbing needed. And Hello Tushy cuts toilet paper used by 80%, so it'll pay for itself in a few months. Plus, Hello Tushy has your ass covered with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. All right. That sounds good. I, I tried a powder and it did not go well. So, yeah. How do I get a Hello Tushy? Well, defeat swamp ass. Go to hellotushy.com slash awful to get 10% off plus free shipping. That's a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off. That's hellotushy.com slash awful. It's somehow wet and dusty. Got, I got I don't it. I not understand. It. It, seems, it doesn't even make sense. It's like paper mache. Okay. Ow! Ow! Mm. 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 Ow! Mm. I'd have to try a higher setting. Ow! Fuck! Well, hey, hey, Noah, Noah, what are you doing? And mm. why is Heath hooked up to all of those uh, sensors? Ow! E ow! Well, so mm. I'm trying to figure out how high a voltage I need to electrify these shot glasses with before Heath will stop drinking the whiskey out of them. <laughs> oh my god this hurts so much mm. really Heath because anything above that is potentially fatal it says on the box oh, okay Noah why are you shocking Heath with liquor oh it's um Irish conversion therapy what yeah I'm going to shock the Irish out of him Th that's horrible why would you do that well so Eli has this like hoity -dee -toy, -dee -dee toy thing that he does in it like kind of makes fun of Irish people and it's starting to get under Heath's skin. So he decided he doesn't want to be Irish anymore because he thinks it'll make Eli stop picking on him. Well, and, yeah, and, and so he can apply for a job in old timey Boston. Hmm. Hey, are we out of that tingly zappy scotch? Uh, Noah, trying to change who he is, isn't the right solution. Wouldn't it just be easier to explain to Eli how those jokes make Heath feel and ask him to be more sensitive? Mm, no, that would just make him do it more. We are out of it? Uh, okay, yeah, so I, I, I guess I can see that. But regardless, you can't torture the Irish out of somebody. He, he's still going to be just as Irish when you were done. Well, forgive me for not just settling for your assumptions. That's why I'm doing the experiment. Now, if you'd like to stick around, we can find out for sure whether the therapy works. How do you test someone's Irishness? All right, so Heath, I'm going to list a bunch of ethnicities, and you tell me which ones you think have it too easy these days. Okay, Ooh, you know, okay. I, I, I've got to be elsewhere right now. So we're out of that scotch, though? Yeah, no, we're out of that. We drank a little. And we're back for still more of this shit. When we last left off, Michelle was explaining how in the 1980s, the APA became a bunch of gay commies. Yeah, they started a military campaign, actually. I don't know if you've heard of jamming. Yes. It's a <laughs> war thing. <laughs> you play stuff on the other side's radio frequency and they, they can't, you, the good guys can't use the radio anymore. It's bad. same thing. Same thing. The, the gay libby yes. just screams gay stuff on the internet and, you know, everybody else gets jammed. Mm -hmm. You can't use the internet. We be jamming. Yeah, exactly. That's the, <laughs> that's the strategy. So this is so amazing. He's like, you know, the gay lobby has come up with a new, tactic and then he explains the tactic and i'm like wait did you just explain almost everyone in the world disagreeing with you is that the tactic because that sounds like the tactic that you just described He's like we'll say a, something on our side and then a thousand people will say something on the other side <laughs> science is really jamming it with new data <laughs> fucked up i mean here's the, the the last movie you all made me watch at least like had a plot like it was the story of this gay country singer who didn't want to be gay anymore and he just followed his life and you know all of his terrible choices this is just like a bunch of whiny nerds yeah. complaining that nobody pays attention to them <laughs> and they're all having meltdowns about now nobody buys their book <laughs> <laughs> like i'm just like after a point i'm just like watching this movie i'm just like like they're not like this is just them complaining that nobody respects them yes and like complaining that nobody respects you is not a great way to earn respect the right yeah exactly yeah. the rest of the rest of this movie could just be called i drive a dodge stratus <laughs> fuck you buy my book you don't talk to me that way 
<laughs> so, yeah, but this is where we get to the point in their retelling, I guess, where they decide to make their own APA with blackjack and hookers, and they're going to call it NARTH. I cannot believe they went with the name Narth. But yes, after having introduced Narth like three fucking times in this movie, they introduced Narth. And guess what? The Narth lady, she's a little box person. Yep, yep. that's yep. right. She is. <laughs> she's not a big box person. She's a little box no, person. No, she was uh-uh. filmed on John's tiny little microphone camera yeah. <laughs> companion. Yeah. Yeah. And what kills me, too. Is like so. So during this section, when they're when they're talking about why they formed North, they formed North in like 1992, 1993, something like that. Mm-hmm. And they're like, like we had to do this because of how powerful the gay lobby was. They controlled the media, they controlled politics, they controlled the culture. And it's like the only way this makes sense is if you ignore that at this exact moment that you're forming North, that Bill Clinton is in the White House signing the Defense of Marriage Act and don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. Like, 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 what do you, what world are you talking about where the 90s was this gay utopia where gays were in control of everything? Like, yeah, you were losing every battle. The (laughs) AIDS was still a a rampant plague that was killing and that the government was just ignoring because they thought it was funny. Like, what are you talking about? Right. Right. Exactly. That's insanity. We hadn't even advanced to a culture to the point yet where we were making fun of gay people in our television and our movies at that point in 92. Right. right. Yeah. So, okay. So Michelle plays a bit of violin for the hardworking bigots over there at North. He explains that the mainstream media is, quote, an extension of the liberal Democratic Party, end quote. And by the way, the Democratic Party is an extension of the gay lobby. As well, so obviously, mm-hmm. you know, transitive property, the mainstream media is just all the way gay. It's just crazy because, like, they're just still whining. They're whining that, like, nobody, like, oh, we were so powerless in 1992 and we're even more powerless now. It's like, the fuck you. Trump was just in the White House. Yeah. Like, Mitch McConnell is a person that exists and is probably the most powerful <laughs> person on the planet. Like, what are you talking about? That, like, yeah, no oh, kidding. we're just powerless little gr- Like, go fuck yourselves. What are you... Uh, well, I mean, they're Canadian, and Canadians are a powerless guess you're group. Right. I guess there's that, but you know, yeah, if yeah. You're, <laughs> they're like, oh, we can't hold jobs, blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. right, more more meltdown about how they can't have a job or sell a book. They also say that the gay lobby has really deep pockets, and I was like, really, really, churches, mm-hmm. conservative groups, the yeah. Koch brothers, you don't have any deep pockets to work with on your team, right? That's in fucking sanity, yeah. Exactly. Your pockets are religion. Jesus. They're like, you know, if you're openly bigoted towards LGBTQ people, you'll lose your job. And I'm just like, well, unless you're fucking working for Fox News or anything religious or something. My God, they're making the argument that they're the ones losing their fucking jobs over shit. It's still legal in most of this country to fire someone for being gay. I mean, this movie alone has employed 30 to 40 people. Yeah, exactly. Now, granted, <laughs> they couldn't afford a big camera for everyone. <laughs> but, like, they managed to get a bunch of people on the payroll for this. Yeah, well, and of course, this is the point, at, 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 like, in the construction of this film where one of the people involved said, hey, you know, I know we've spent a lot of time talking about how the APA is just political and it's against us and, and, and everything, but... um." Every other psychological association on Earth also denounces us, so we should probably point that out and and have some defense for that. But apparently, that's all. They're all just following the APA's coattails, or they've been suckered or bullied by the Gala B. If you listener at home are listening to this, it feels like we're just talking about the same thing over and over. It's because they are like this yeah. is like <laughs> the thirtieth straight minute where they're just whining about, and I don't even know who this is for. Like, I get. That there is probably a a group of people out there who are like very Christian and gay and don't want to be gay anymore, and so are seeking out like, all right, how can I like validate that what I want to go through with is real? And so like the stuff at the beginning about some of the studies and all like all of that stuff could like I understand there's an audience for that. I hmm. don't know what this whiny bullshit. I don't know who like who's who cares about the whiny bullshit stuff. Like who is this for? Who are you making this movie for? us at this point right like clearly it's just like they were like well they need to they're gonna need to fill out a full episode they're gonna need something to make fun of here okay but they they introduced a new idea here 
diet programs are just like being gay? Or did they already say that literally? No, no it's the same fucking thing. Yeah, and a whole fuck, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but he goes back to that. He's real proud of that analogy. So he goes yeah. back to that whole thing about like, we're just like maligned diet fats. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in fairness, conversion therapy is the tapeworm diet of psychology. Yeah. I guess. There's something yeah. to that analogy. I don't think that's what they were going for, though. There's also this weird bit where they complain that about the way that the media will report on it if they find out that you do gay conversion therapy. Like sort of like a how dare you out the people who do this job that we're saying there's nothing wrong with. That we've made an entire movie about. Right. Like we're reporting on ourselves that we do this work. My name is at the bottom of the screen. We want to get the word out there that we do. This. Yeah. <laughs> like you're just whining that people don't like you. Yep. Some more. How dare the media point out when they find a dangerous bigot in our midst? Can you imagine if they if the media wouldn't tell us the name if they were just like, well, we found a local therapist that is doing dangerous bigoted things, but we're not saying who. Right. <laughs> They complained that SNL made fun of them, which was fun. Oh, that's right. Yeah, everybody's picking on us. Even set, like that's that's a big deal, man. If Saturday Night Live made fun of us, and then he's like, "We're also on Criminal Minds and SVU." Okay, <laughs> I forgot where I was going. With that. Like it's just more of the humiliation fetish. Or it's like John at the beginning where he was just like talking about being naked and shitting in front of oh, all of his right, classmates. Yeah. Like this is just like that. They're like, <laughs> these people made fun of us. And then all oh, these people went on television and made fun of us. And then these people wrote an entire episode of TV all about how bad we, it's like, why are you telling us this? And then I had to take my underwear off while they made fun of me. And I took a shit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And there's also this weird, I don't know what point he's trying to make or that he thinks he's trying to make. And he's like, now you'll hear all of these stories. The media put out all these stories about kids that were tortured by conversion therapy, people who survived this and said it's really bad. But look at the timing of those stories. It's weird how they always put those stories out right when there's about to be a vote on some gay rights thing, huh? So, yeah, it's weird that they would publish their stories when they would have the most impact. How does he think newspapers work? <laughs> you report the news alphabetically, damn it. Like, does he think, like, <laughs> it's like, all right, this guy came in and said he was tortured. However, the Berlin Wall fell today, so we, but we can't report on the Berlin Wall because the guy who said he was tortured first has to come first because he walked into the office first. Like, what uh, right, we, yeah. No, so. Like, what do you think a newspaper is? Like, how do you think they make these decisions? You, they're not infinite pages. That's literally the job, yeah. You print stories based on when it's most relevant and will be most useful to your readers. Yes, yeah, exactly. Ah, oh, Jesus. But the argument here is essentially is like, you know, the newspaper never even gives the torturer's perspective. Yeah, that's right. We know, like, when there's this big serial killer, we never hear his side of the story. You're right. It's so fucking weird. Confirmation bias. No, no, it's not. That's well, not what that is. To, to, yeah, there's one guy who's like, yeah, and whenever I do media interviews about this kind of stuff, the interviewers are always a bunch of gamos. Like, how could they be objective about this? I'm making fun of them. I'm talking about how they're terrible. Why are you agreeing to do those interviews? Nobody is making you do an interview with the advocate. Right. <laughs> like, why are you agreeing to be interviewed by these people if you hate it so much? You don't, you don't have to go to the human rights campaign's newsletter and accept their invitation to be interviewed. Like, what are you doing if you hate it? Right. And, and again, like, look, if the end result is they evilly used my own words in print, I don't give a fuck who did the interview. I don't give a fuck what their bias was going in. If all they did was quote your ass, they were perfectly in their right to do so. But, like, there's a reason why Trump never gave interviews to MSNBC. Right. He did not want to because they would not be nice to him. Yeah. Nobody, like, this. Oh, the only, every interview I do, the person is gay. Well, then don't, if you that bothers you, don't get interviewed by him. You are in control of that. Also, he's in the middle of being interviewed when he says that. <laughs> is he telling me? Is he trying to tell me this movie was made by gay people? Because I don't think that it was. Jeez, okay. And then Michelle comes out. This is so fucking weird. He he reveals our ultimate goal. He's like, the goal is to make conversion therapy illegal. And he says it's a barely veiled. I'm like, it's not veiled at all. That is our plan. Yeah, it's what the law is called. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's actually, right at the top of the page, it's the name of it. The Make This Shit Illegal Act of 2020. Like, well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, no, we're not. And sorry, if it's veiled at all, we're doing a bad job. 
<laughs> yeah. And he, he actually says, all right, well, let's read the law. It's very telling. And the law says, you know, we, we're banning conversion therapy because it's cruel and unscientific and, you know, technically violates some Geneva conventions, we're pretty sure. So we're banning it. And he's like, okay, that, that sounded bad for my thing. Let's just do it. We're going to do the law one at a time, word by word. So cruel. What? What is the what does the word cruel mean by itself <laughs> like that? Maybe it won't sound as bad for you that way. Making me watch this movie was cruel, devoid of any scientific basis, harmful to my mental health, and infringing on my fundamental human <laughs> oh, rights. Oh wow! So we're illegal in Canada. If you're in Canada, stop listening to this. It's illegal. Specifically Montreal. <laughs> well, in Montreal, yes, yeah, this is a Montreal law. <laughs> So now, of course, the arguments here, the the discussion here has shifted now to the laws against conversion therapy or proposed laws against conversion therapy. So they have to start discrediting this. And that's really hard when they're like, you know, yeah, all over the world, independent legal minds and, and legislative groups are coming to the same conclusion, which is that the thing we're advocating for should be illegal to do. Right. So they have one of their talking heads come out and just go like, there's a lot of fraud, though. When they pad, none has ever been caught. But like, there's there, you know, they're fucking your fraud. You're that's you. You're you guys are fraud. They have, yeah, twenty minutes left. It's time for the you are segment. So this is what we're <laughs> and they're like, this is all like they're just doing. Like it's just it's also amateurish. They're doing like a bunch of like no true Scotsman stuff of like yep. They say electroshock therapy, but but true migration therapy doesn't use electroshock therapy. Yep. And they're saying it harms people. Well, if you were harmed by it, then it wasn't what we're doing. And like it's like. Yeah, anything that, and again, go back 30 minutes in the episode and you'll talk about like the exact same things they're saying they aren't doing, they were doing, because it doesn't really matter what they argue. They're just saying whatever they can say to get through the next five minutes of this fucking movie. Absolutely, yeah. No, at one point he's telling us basically, yes, there are people that'll say they were tortured in conversion therapy, but they'll never be able to tell you all the details of like who did it and at what time of day was it done and what color shirt was he wearing. You know, I don't really believe that I was tortured stuff. When 78% of the people, the respondents say they were. Anyway, this might as well be part of a Mike Lindell documentary, like with a spreadsheet about them not being able to name these specific <laughs> dates and like <laughs> flying data across to Germany and back. Right. All right. So then Michelle demonstrates that he doesn't know the difference between censorship and just everyone else disagreeing with him some more by pointing out that his studies are being censored because nobody will print them. No, like censored would be them pulling them off the shelves when you print them. Yeah. <laughs> Just not being interested in what you have to say. Again, me and Patrick, we submit so much shit to the APA for publication. They never publish any of it. It's not because we're being censored. Right. I mean, what this goes down to is it back to like psychologue, like words are just whatever you want them to be. Like he's just decided that. You know, and, and it's not just him. It's everyone in our culture these days. It's just like you pick a word and you just decide on a new meaning for it. And that's the new meaning for it. And that's what I get to just yell about. And it's like because nothing matters and nobody checks anything. And it's just. Yeah. If bleh. I call it censorship uh, uh, enough, that will become what censorship means. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because even Amazon censors them by not publishing their books or selling their books. Honestly, fuck Amazon, though. Well, yeah, sure. Fuck Amazon. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm not going to defend Amazon. <laughs> like everything this, but, like, but this. Everything but yeah. removing these books. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's just like, well, and then that, again, they don't realize what a terrible point they're making. It's like, we're too evil for Amazon. Right? Jeff Bezos looked at us and went, well, I don't want to be associated with those motherfuckers. <laughs> so. All right. And then, okay, so we're going to circle back now to one of the sort of basic arguments that have been making throughout this, which is, again, the idea that sexual orientation can change, therefore we can change it, right? Like, you know how snow is a real thing and that proves that I can make it? <laughs> right. Right, it's like that. And the study that they're going to show us here, this is some, this is the like worst, I think, bait and switch shit that they do the entire time. Cause they do this study where they're like, we followed a bunch of people over a long period of time that identified one way sexually and saw how they identified later, you know, like so come back seven years later and, and, and checked. And what they found was that a lot of people who identified as bisexual changed their identification either to homosexual or heterosexual over a seven year period. Not even a majority, just a lot. Based on that, they're saying, see, we can change people's sexuality. It happens all the time. I mean, my sexual orientation changed four times since we started recording. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Where are you now? I'm now double super gay. Oh, it's like, wow. Cool. It's like regular gay, but I can fly. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I want to be double. What? I need to go to conversion therapy. I'm just hoping it, I'm just hoping it doesn't change again while I'm midair. <laughs> it could be dangerous. Could be dangerous. Well, that's uh, get, being gay is dangerous. That's what this movie's been trying to tell you. Oh, and this is also where Narth realizes that their name sounds like somebody enthusiastically vomiting up mushrooms or something. So this, they changed it to something a little more, what is it? They say modern, a little more modern. They say modern. <laughs> they, they, they changed their name to the Alliance for Therapeutic Choice and Scientific Integrity now. So Aftkazi, which is modern. <laughs> <laughs> just flows right off the tongue. <laughs> so, but here's the thing. Okay. Anytime you're in an organization that changes its name so that it's less clear what you do, you're a bad guy. Right? Like, like, come on. Their, their fucking group was called the, you know, whatever, National Association of Recovery and Therapy for Homosexuals. And now it's called the Society for Fucking Therapeutic Choice and Scientific Integrity. Fuck you. Fucking fuck you. Once again, it's it's like, you know, they've backed up the goalpost a little and they're like, oh, we really can hope to do now is get our foot in the door. And so that's what we're going to call our group. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're uh, they're bad people, Noah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, OK. So and they're not just bad people. They're also bad at movie making. You know, how, like when you go to a, like a, a conference or whatever, you get a bad speaker. They'll just like put up sentences on their PowerPoint slides and then read them to you. We're watching a movie of someone doing that. Yeah. So we get yet another study, this time by Santero, Whitehead, and Ballesteros, that proves how right this movie was. Again. Now, I couldn't read the name of the journal that it was published in, but I could see that it said Catholic Medical something up in the corner okay. of the journal that this study came from. It's the Catholic Medical Association. Okay. Yes. It was the... So <laughs> they're complaining that... They can't get funded by anybody, you know, real, only religious groups will fund them. Yep. And then they're like, okay, but we finally got funded by a non-religious publisher called the Catholic Yes, Medical yes. <laughs> this is the Lineacre Quarterly. And yeah, that's literally the official journal of the Catholic Medical Association. Wow. That's their secular backer. Yep, right <laughs> exactly. Uh, to be fair, though, I think... Most Protestants don't consider Catholics Christian. Um, okay, yep, all right. No, that's they're not. To them, they're like, oh, these secularists. The yeah, no, we didn't get we didn't get religious <laughs> funding. We got irreligious funding. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're funded <laughs> so. by the Vatican. They're not a religious organization. <laughs> okay, but then they actually got deleted by the Catholic Medical Association for being too homophobic for the Catholic Medical Association. Yes. Oh my God! Edit your movie. Just don't have this part. Don't. Yeah, you <laughs> don't have to post every L. You don't have to do it. <laughs> so, and then now it's this fucking movie is just degenerated to Michelle bitching about an article he saw in his local newspaper. Right? Again, it's all <laughs> whining. It's all this entire movie is just people whining. Oh, he's like, and also in the Montreal newspaper, it said we were a bunch of assholes. Okay, man. And again, here in this whole fucking movie, they're doing everything in their power to avoid mentioning minors at all costs, because like that yes. is the oh, entire yeah. ball game. Like no one cares if John and Christine want to go join some wacky religion or, or and set rules for themselves. Who fucking cares? We let adults do all that kind of stuff all the time, like we said before. But forcing unwilling minors into harmful conversion therapy stuff. It, I mean, that's a bridge too far for like for like normal people to start perking their ears up and be like. Uh, yep. what's going on and so like look i am a big idiot who does magic tricks for a living so you know grain of salt but but to my knowledge no one cares if adults are volunteering to go get married to women they're not actually attracted to like no one gives a shit but what people are trying to ban are the camps that these people are setting up for kids yep where like parents are driving them out there and and, and doing that stuff and and so but w w for some reason this documentary doesn't want to mention the kids and there's mm -hmm. and we're not really clear why well, and I want to be clear on because I, I I couldn't agree more, but there's yeah. one important distinction that I think that we need to make because the other thing that they're trying to do is to sneak this into psychiatric treatment so that there's at least some possibility that some gay person is going to walk into an actual like what they think is an actual legitimate therapist's office and be offered gay conversion therapy by somebody who already has, you know, the authority that goes with that title. 
right? Those are the two things that we're working against here. Because again, yeah, if, if you want to go to Baptist anti turn you straight camp or whatever, nobody gives a fuck. Absolutely zero people care if a bunch of adults want to go to Baptist de-gaying camp. Yeah. There's also a weird moment here where Michelle, like, cuts us off from current events. <laughs> so, yeah, he, like, very abruptly, like, informs us. Yeah, he's just, you this know, is as far as we go. <laughs> yeah. No farther. <laughs> I don't know. The documentary's going very badly. Time out. Time out. <laughs> we need to reevaluate a few things. Yeah, there's there's 10 minutes left in the thing. And he's like, but this is the last thing that will happen. And I'm like, wow, that's a weird <laughs> announcement to make. I appreciate you letting me know. I'm going to stick with you. But so we cut back over to John with his tiny little microphone. And he's ramping up for his uplifting finale about how great it was to have the the gay tortured out of him. You know, he, he's even good at baseball now because he's not. He's not gay. Tackled a bunch of pitchers mounds. I'm really good at baseball now. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, we're making fun of him, but like, it's the whole gag, isn't it? Like, you're taking people who you've taught your community to marginalize, and then after they you've beaten them down, you give them support for the very first time in their lives. Like, of yeah. course, they're, they're going to be the happiest they've ever been. Like, of course, that's how it works. Yeah, it's like it's like the whole secret behind like Mormon missionaries. Like, you don't go, you don't send them out there to actually convert anyone. You send them out there so people will be mean to them for trying to convert them, and they'll realize, oh, the only people who are nice to me are my fellow Mormons at home. Yep. And then you go home and you're a good Mormon for the rest of your life because you were just taught that the rest of the world is mean to you. Like that's it's the that's the whole trick of it. That's the whole get ball game. Yep. Yeah. And 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 so what we're seeing here now is is John and Christine Stockholm syndrome. Exactly. Them telling us about how much they love their gay conversion therapy and, and, and Big Brother is looking out for all of us. So, okay. So then Michelle comes back and he's like, you know, I, and we already teased this, of course, at the beginning. He's like, now that we have heard all of this evidence, there are a few closing thoughts I would like to add. 17 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Rule of 17 17 Here yeah. we go. Yeah, I'm exactly. going to read them all now. And he literally <laughs> reads them off his screen. That is, that is, you know what? TLDR, what Patrick just said is what we see. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way I'm going through all 17. So, so many of them are just the same thing as the last one, but phrased differently. It's, yeah, it's just whining again. I mean, yeah. It's just, let's, let's, let's remind you how much I have to whine about. Yeah, right. Well, and then you finally get to the, because they put them on screen and they're all like verbosely worded because of fucking course they are. And you're just like, oh my God, he's not going to read all of these, is he? And he does. And just as he gets to the end of it, and you're like, oh, finally, he says, and from those 17 observations, we get five recommendations. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, what are you doing? God damn it. You don't have to live your life this way. Let me convert you to not being a big whiny nerd. You might as well read the bibliography for the documentary now, word for word, including Ibid and Opsit. Like, fuck you. Finish your movie. Oh, my God. It goes on for so long. All right. And then John shows up one last time to tell us that eventually he got married to a woman. These women fascinate me. Like, what is their deal? No kidding. Like, the mindset that leads these women to marry, like, because he's like, and we started dating, and I told her I was gay, and she was, like, very okay with it. And then we got, our we, our dating became more serious, and we got married. And I'm like, what? What is the mindset of that woman who hears that? And it's like. That's a confident lady. Yeah. Or it's somebody who just really doesn't like sex and is like, oh, good. You right. know, we'll probably have to fuck on the honeymoon, maybe a couple of times for some kids along the way. And then I can be done with this shit. Or it's Christine. <laughs> She's like, all right, I'll make you look good at the uh, church social. You make me look good and then we'll fuck what we want to fuck. So. So anyway, that's probably the end of the movie, right? Oh, my fucking god, god. Damn it, it's not no damn michelle has to come on and show for doc joe's learn to de-gay people on line class yeah and then he <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite parts he's like we actually have another study that says i'm right he's, he's just not ready yet it's not like, the I 11th am, hour we're trying to we sneak could, in more stuff to you. <laughs> the data it's the the data is too good the, in fact the, i don't you know i'm scared to show it to you it's that good 
<laughs> He's talking about a study they're still doing and tell us what evidence they're going to find with it. I'm like, dude, you you know you just fucked it all up, though, right? <laughs> I was slightly confused because he started like, we will find this, this. And I'm like, are you talking? Are you using future tense? Like, have you already found these things? <laughs> right. Yeah. Or are you? Are, is this the first time you're using this tense correctly? <laughs> <laughs> also, at this point, because the whole time he's always been on this, like he's on a pier looking at Montreal in the background or something. And at this point, like cars start driving by and drowning out his speech as though the traffic figured out what he was doing and people were just revving their engines near it. (laughs) But he goes on this long tirade about how he'll never get the Canadian Medal of Freedom or whatever the hell honor it is that i mean honestly i'm upset that i'll also never get the order of canada so like I, <laughs> like i'm with him on that i'm like that i'm also upset that i don't get one of those yep the fucking apa won't publish our books the fucking canada never won't give us any awards <laughs> so i didn't expect to have this much in common with gay conversion therapists yeah you should present the magical order of canada <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> right yeah yeah all right, and then we get, he basically argues that Canada is kind of like, if you think about it, like a totalitarian gay state, like a gay totalitarian state. <sighs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he closes it with like, you know what? You can't even say what I'm saying here in Canada where I am. It's impossible. What I, this right now that you're watching is impossible Bye. Literally, he says bye. The movie is bye. He didn't know how to end the movie, so he literally told us goodbye. (laughs) I thought it was polite. And then not enough movies do that, really. Yeah. yeah. He might as well just dive off the pier that he's on. (laughs) It's so silly. Oh, if he if if the camera panned out and it was a he was a mermaid the whole time, that would have been wild. (laughs) (laughs) Twist ending. I didn't see did not see that coming. And then we get not credits. We don't we get instead a note that says that literally nobody who worked on that movie wanted their goddamn name associated with it. <laughs> That's why the blurs happened. Only a couple of them were smart enough to ask for them from the beginning with a lie. Yeah. Did you see what that was called though? <laughs> yes, it said Phantom Generic at the top. That's my superhero name. <laughs> I've, I've, ne- I've never saved anyone, but I have accidentally killed four people. Well, you just never know when you're going to be yeah. super gay enough to fly. That's yeah, the thing. Tricky, that's the thing. Yeah. My sexual my <laughs> will change on a whim and I'll lose all my powers. I'll stop being phantom generic. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you've kind of already answered this one, but I wrote it in. So I'm going to ask you anyway. I, and I kind of have to because I know that the people who made this are probably going to listen along. Patrick, are you still gay? No. Oh, wait. Just flipped back. Yes. Oh, yeah. All yeah, right. All right. Just I just flipped back. I, I hadn't been for several minutes, but I oh, just. Oh, okay. I just all right. Yeah. Back. It's just, well, it's migration. It comes back yeah, and forth. Yeah, yeah. So, and and Heath, are are you still straight? Uh, I have seventeen things to say about that. <laughs> if you'll indulge me. <laughs> Go on. Conclusions. I will not. Uh, P- Patrick, is there anything you want to plug while we've got you here? Yeah, so uh, like you said at the top, uh, I am a uh, producer and founder of uh, a magic show here in New York City. If you're in the area, it's called Scam New York, the Society of Conjurers and Magicians. Uh, we do, I know, we uh, we meet every Sunday at our secret underground lair beneath Times Square. Nice. You know, solve our mysteries and work our magic. If you would like to join the Society of Conjurers and Magicians and attend one of our secret underground magic shows, you can find more at magicscam.com. You can also go to please don't visit this website website.com nice uh, both nice. of those both of those work. like an abby hoffman book exactly all right and of course those will be linked on the show notes as well well patrick thank you so much for hanging out with us this was a rough fucking watch but it was a real delight to have you along board no no i'm uh i'm excited to be here so thank you all so much for having me all right and while that does it for our review of censor that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you back so heath tell us What's on deck? The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. It just released in theaters and on HBO Max. Very excited. Oh, what a shame. I will not be here for that one. I will sure regret missing it. 
So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 303 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Patrick for helping us out today, and an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and telling all your friends about the show. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot we blow drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder and on the track next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Three thirds of the cast went on to be unemployed forever. Michelle got lost in a time vortex, confusing the past with the future forever. <laughs> Eventually, he did get around to hating on Gala's C through F, though. It's important to set expectations to reasonable levels. Yep. <laughs> it's all the more important for Heath and I. <clears throat> Take from that what you will. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.